dimensional networks consist of several loops, each of about 20 micrometers in diameter. Their surface is covered by an adhesive. The first loop of such a network is formed when the hyphal tip fuses with the basal hypha. New nets are formed on the mycelium, especially if nematodes are present. A nematode is captured when it enters the loop. But it may also be captured if it merely touches the outside of a loop. At the infection site, an indentation of the nematode cuticle is seen where a penetration tube is being formed. The effective adhesive with its fibrilla structure causes the nematode to stick firmly to the trap. The infection tubes penetrate the cuticle of the living prey and swell to form infection bulbs before destruction of the internal organization of the nematode occurs. From the infection bulb, trophic hyphae develop in which lipid droplets accumulate. The accumulated nutrients promote the development of new mycelium and new trap formation. The fourth example of a nematode trapping fungus uses constricting rings. The rings of Arthrobotrys dactyloides consist of three cells attached to the mycelium by a stalk. When touched, each of the three cells suddenly swells, forming three spherical structures. In the laboratory, here in Dactylaria brocophaga, the swelling of the three cells can be induced by heat treatment. Note the rapid cytoplasmic movements near the internal surface of these cells. Sometimes nematode larvae, for example of Aphilenchus avini, may enter a trap without causing the trap to close. After closure of the trap, hyphae from the swollen ring cells grow into the captured nematode. The digestion process is similar to that of other nematode trapping fungi. Nutrients are transferred to the fungus. During this 28-hour sequence, lipid droplets accumulate in the hyphae. Some fungi possess other capture mechanisms. Verticillium succlosporium infects nematode eggs by using its hyphal tips. Pleurotus ostriatus produces droplets on its hyphae which are highly toxic to nematodes. This group of fungi do not form special infection structures with which to attack nematodes but use their hyphal tips. The growing mycelium cannot attack a moving nematode, but invades the eggs of cyst and root knot nematodes. These are eggs of the sugar beet nematode, Heterodera schachtii, a serious parasite. Here, a non-infected egg with a fully developed larva the hyphal tips of Verticillium succlasporium may enter the egg through the egg shell. At the penetration site, the hyphae may form an apressorium like swelling. After three weeks, disorganization of the internal structure is evident. New hyphae penetrate through the egg shell and form a new mycelium outside the host. An infected egg at an early stage. 
and here at a later stage when hyphae are visible inside. This scanning electron micrograph of a crushed egg allows a view of the dense mass of hyphae inside the shell. The final example of a fungus with nematode-destroying capability is Pleurotus ostreatus, with its toxic droplets. The fungus has developed a strategy to immobilize its victim before it is invaded by the fungus. The toxin is released from short hyphal stalks, which are thickened apically. When a nematode touches these droplets, the toxic effect is reflected in the animal's behavior. After only a few minutes, the nematode becomes immobilized and then distorted. The poisoned nematode elicits chemotropic growth of new hyphae, which enter the worm through its mouth. Some hyphae enter the nematode directly through the cuticle, form an infection bulb, and from the bulb, trophic hyphae. The nematode dies. At the same time, there is pronounced cytoplasmic streaming within the mycelium. Some of the different methods of attacking living nematodes are summarized again here. Flagellated spores moving chemotactically towards the prey. Conidia with an adhesive part sticking to the cuticle. Mycelial structures having an adhesive function. Mycelial structures acting mechanically. Hyphal tips attacking the eggs of nematodes. Mycelial structures immobilizing the prey before invasion by normal hyphae. Irrespective of the infection method, the result is always the death of the nematode. The ability of nematophagous fungi to attack nematodes and use them as nutrients may have a regulatory effect on nematode populations. It is obvious that these fungi have a potential to be further developed for biological control of nematode parasites on plants and animals.